of the Dut Gita, Chapter 1 By the grace of God, the Brahmins above all men are inspired by the disposition to non-duality, that is, unity of the self with God, which relieves them of the great fear. How can I salute the self, which is indestructible, which is all bliss, which in itself and by itself pervades everything, and which is inseparable from itself? I alone am ever free from all taint. The world exists like a mirage within me. To whom shall I bow? Verily, the one self is all, free from differentiation and non-differentiation. Neither can it be said, it is, nor it is not. What a great mystery. This is the whole substance of Vendata. This is the essence of all knowledge, theoretical and intuitional. I am the Atman, by nature impersonal and all-pervasive. That God who is the self in all, impersonal and changeless, like unto space, by nature, purity itself, verily, verily, that I am. I am pure knowledge, imperishable, infinite. I know neither joy nor pain. Whom can they touch? The actions of the mind, good and evil, the actions of the body, good and evil, the actions of the voice, good and evil, exist not in me. Atman. I am the nectar which is knowledge absolute. Beyond the range of the senses, I am. The mind is as space, embracing all. I am beyond mind. In reality, the mind has no independent existence. How can it be said that the self is manifest? How can it be said that the self is limited? I alone am existence. All this objective world am I, more subtle than space itself am I. Know the self to be infinite consciousness, self-evident beyond destruction, enlightening all bodies equally, ever shining. In it is neither day nor night. No, Atman, to be one, ever the same, changeless. How canst thou say, I am the meditator, and this is the object of meditation? How can perfection be divided? Thou, O Atman, was never born, nor did thou ever die. The body was never thine. The Shruti, or revealed scriptures, has often said, This is all Brahman. Thou art all Brahman, free from all change. The same within and without, absolute bliss. 
run not to and from like a ghost. Neither unity nor separation exists in thee, nor in me. All is Atman alone. I and thou and the world have no real being. The subtle faculties of touch, taste, smell, form, and sound, which constitute the world without, are not thyself, nor are they within thee. Thou art the great all-transcending reality. Birth and death exist in the mind, not in thee as do also bondage and liberation. Good and evil are in the mind, and not in thee. O beloved, why dost thou cry? Name and form are neither in thee nor in me. O my mind, why dost thou range in delusion like a ghost? No, Atman to be above duality and be happy. Thou art the essence of knowledge, indomitable, eternal, ever free from modifications. Neither is there in thee attachment nor indifference. Let not thyself suffer from desires. All the Shrutis speak of Atman as without attributes, ever pure, imperishable, without a body, the eternal truth, that know to be thyself. Know all forms, physical and subtle, as illusion. The reality underlying them is eternal. By living this truth, one passes beyond birth and death. The sages call Atman the ever-same. By giving up attachment, the mind sees neither duality nor unity. Concentration is not possible either on perishable objects, on account of their mutability, nor on Atman. Is and is not do not apply to Atman either. In Atman, freedom absolute, how is samadhi possible? Birthless, pure, bodiless, equable, imperishable, Atman, thou knowest thyself to be. How then canst thou say, I know Atman, or I know not Atman? Thus, has the Shruti spoken of Atman, that thou art? Of the illusory world, born of the five physical elements, the Shruti says, neti neti, or not this, not this. All this is ever pervaded by thee as Atman. In thee is neither the meditator nor the object of meditation. Why, O oh mind, dost thou shamelessly meditate? I know not, Shiva. How can I speak of him? Who Shiva is, I know not. How can I worship him? I am Shiva, the only reality, 
like unto space absolute is my nature. In me is neither unity nor variety. The cause of imagination also is absent in me. Free from subject and object am I. How can I be self-realizable? Endless is my nature, not else exists. Truth absolute is my nature, not else exists. Atman by nature, the supreme reality am I. Neither am I slayer nor the slain. On the destruction of a jar, the space therein unites with all space. In myself and Shiva, I see no difference when the mind is purified. Brahman alone is as pure consciousness. In truth, there is no jar and no jar space, no embodied soul nor its nature. There are no worlds, no Vedas, no Devas, no sacrifices, no castes, no family tribes, no nationalities, no smoke path, no shining path. There is only the highest truth, the absolute Brahman. Some there are that prize non-dualism, others hold to dualism. They know not the truth, which is above both. How can the supreme reality be described, since it is neither white nor any other color, has no qualities such as sound, and is beyond voice and mind? I eat. I give, I act. Such statements do not apply to Atman, which is purity, birthless and imperishable. Where the one Brahman is alone, how can it be said, this is Maya, or this is not Maya? This is shadow, or this is not shadow. I am without beginning and without end, never was I bound. By nature, pure, taintless, is myself. This, no eye of surety. From subtle substance down to formed creation, there is nothing but Brahman. Most clearly do I see this. Where, then, is the division of caste? The absolute void and its opposite, all am I everlasting. Atman is not male or female, nor is it neuter, neither is it happiness or suffering. How dare ye pervert it! Atman is not purified by the six methods of yoga, Absence of the mind makes it no clearer. The teachings of a guru reveal it not. It is all purity, in itself, by itself. I am neither bound nor free. I am not separate from Brahman. Neither the doer nor the enjoyer of the fruits of karma am I. The pervader, or the pervaded, I am not. As a volume of water poured into water is inseparably united with water, so I perceive matter and spirit are one. Why callest thou Atman personal and impersonal, since thou art neither bound nor free? Pure. Pure thou art, without a body, unrelated to the mind, 
beyond Maya. Why art thou ashamed to declare, I am Atman, the supreme reality? O oh, my mind, why dost thou cry? Realize thy Atman. O oh, beloved, drink the timeless, great nectar of non-duality. Knowledge born of the intellect am I not. By nature truth eternal am I. I am perpetual immutability. Neither formless nor with form, described by the Vedas as not this, not this. Free from separation and unity, the true self reigns supreme. There is no father, no mother, no kinsman, no son, no wife, no friend, no prejudice, no doctrine. Why art thou disquiet, O oh my mind? Why do the wise imagine the bodiless Brahman to be a body? In it there is neither day nor night, neither rising nor setting. Since the imperfections of attachment and the like are not in me, I am above the suffering of the body. Know me to be infinite, like unto space, one Atman. O oh, my mind, my friend, many words are not needful, and the world comprehends not reason. In a word, I have told thee the essence of truth. Thou art truth. Thou art as space. In whatever place and in whatever state the yogi dies, his spirit is absorbed into that, as on the destruction of the jar. The space in the jar is united with absolute space. Whether he dies conscious or in a coma, in a holy temple or in the house of an untouchable, he obtains liberation becoming the all-pervading Brahman. The yogis regard righteousness, prosperity, desire for paradise and liberation, and also the moving and fixed objects as mere will of the wisps. The avidut, in unshakable equanimity, living in the holy temple of nothingness, walks naked, knowing all to be Brahman. Where there is no third or fourth, where all is known as Atman, where there is neither righteousness nor unrighteousness, how can there be either bondage or liberation?